these videos were recorded in succession. So, uh, game still allowed. Sorry. Hello, good morning, Annette. Welcome back to more Change Special. We are the ninth to say good day. Oh, well. What? So we are the Knights of St. Nick. The Knights of St. Nick. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay. It, it's a totally fun name of St. Nick as a strawberry thing, but... I don't get it. So, so in Monty Python, Holy Grail... Oh, I haven't seen that. No wonder I don't get it. Oh. <laughs> the orange. What a wonderful fruit. Delicious, juicy, and rich in vitamins. These oranges are growing here while they don't... Uh, the oranges are growing here. While they don't taste good, the, the yield is very stable. This place has naturally become the Latex Beast's Orange Farm. Oh! The or Origins farmers have already noticed your arrival. Don't be shy. Say hello to them. Hilariously, I will save so I don't have to watch that cutscene again. Alright. Oranges or something? I don't know what was going on there. Okay. <laughs> he really did a copy me. That's hilarious. Congratulations, you finally got the right ending. Jeez. Alright, now how does this work? Uh, oh, I see. Part of a exotic message. That may be their last part of the world. Uh, yeah. That may be their last part of the world. Okay. Supply chain for the outside when world outside has been completely broken. So that we can only pick from the cans in the water house. Uh, the, the water house. The warehouse. warehouse. But it's so miserable that I never eat fresh fruits and vegetables. I've almost forgotten what normal food should be like. In order to avoid scurry, all researchers are required to take the one orange for use here every day. I strongly suspect that the acidity of the oranges here is enough to melt the test tube or break it. I'd rather eat the oranges from the bonsai orange tree in the library. You truly are a good boy who loves reading. As we all know, the oranges don't grow in bushes. The shrubs are specifically cultivated dwarf orange trees. The carbon dioxide of the whole building will eventually be recycled here. Out of the photosynthesis of the green plants, it becomes fresh oxygen and is transported back to the whole building to, to, to continue the cycle. These dwarf orange trees require very little nutrients. Their chlorophyll content is best among plants of its kind. Naturally, they become the plant of choice for the oxygen circulation system. But the price of the price of the fruit of the dwarf orange tree, the taste is very unacceptable. Your black wolf pet has tried dwarf orange tree, uh, tree fruit here. After a bite, he never dared to come pick any fruit. But it's very nutritious, isn't it? I guess. Succulents. Yeah, okay. The photosynthesis efficiency of algae is high, where we don't have that many pure water resources. We can't control the growth of algae properly. For the sustainability of the internal resources of this building, we ultimately choose other plants. Just like the choice between algae and plants, we all have better solutions, but none of them have none of us have a choice. Did you know? And you and those other subjects were secretly kidnapped and brought here as arranged by the upper layer? None of the researchers agreed to this. But if there are no subjects, research can't continue. You, I, everyone, had no choice. Smile for the camera, while you're still human. Don't you want to merge with the latex beasts in this room? It's okay. After this, there are so, ma so many latex beasts that come in all variants and colors. You can take your time to pick one. I want to merge with all of them and then not merge. <laughs> Freedom. Um. Oh, well, this one's interesting. Hello? I almost forgot about this Iron Lump's existence. After all, I haven't visited the greenhouse for years. This futuristic-looking robot was actually just a prototype for mass production of household robots. Before this building was used to study latex beast, it was also rented by another technology company as robotics as a robotics laboratory. After the emergency exploration... Ex... For... 
expropriation expropriation uh, expropriation yeah. of, of this building May, many not yet publicly announced machines were left here i have to say these swooping robots that they developed are convenient but this prototype's ai version is really low even the early education machine in the library is smarter than it prototype do you have any special features can you present your abilities to the subject in front of you Can you do something more useful? Every even my dishwasher exceeds you. Can you think of a way to obstruct the subject in front of you from moving forward? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, this is indeed a kind of obstruction. This time, I will be sure to make my demands clearer. Can you, in any way, turn the subject into a latex beast and make him stay carefree and obediently in this building? <laughs> it was like, ooh, why are you carrying me? Although that's not what I had in mind, it's close enough. Of course, it, I wasn't expecting it to do anything actually useful. Hey, can you, like, talk? <sighs> At least it's not hostile, right? Okay, thank you for letting me save. Could be robot. Dictionary intercom. Squirrels, get them. Are you going to let this human get out of here? Are you really not going to turn? Are you going to? Bleh, are you really going to turn a blind eye to this walking hazard? New marvelous machine created by countless engineers. Use your processor. Think of a solution plan. Show your worth. Next time, I'll turn my microwave turn to my microwave for help. At least my microwave can heat my dinner. Can squirrelies transform you? I don't know. Fine. Hold on. Oh yeah, I can. Can they? I think they just uh. That's super cute. Prototype. Can you applaud the subject for me? Enough. Stop knocking on your metal arm. Uh, okay. Guys. Okay. You can you can you can stop now. Okay. Jeez. See you. Oh. Your little buddy finally found out what, that you weren't missing. Now he's relentlessly looking everywhere for you. I suggest you don't expect him to find him his way here. I won't let him ruin our precious time alone. I want you to make sure that you, next time he sees you, you will be an obedient latex beast who obeys my command. Maybe I shouldn't say it in such a tasteless way. I am not the one who so, so happily mock others. It's just that for some reason I haven't mean to you. Got it, Troublemaker? Oh god. Okay. Let me see what has been recorded in your personal data. Since you woke up, you've taken 6,001 steps in this institute. You really are laid back. Unbelievable. It's like you were exploring the place with the attitude of taking a stroll. I don't know why you roam around this building. For age reluctant, for ages reluctant to advance. Don't those latex beasts scare you at all? Don't you respect the latex beasts at all? But if you really are concerned, you still manage to get here. I don't think that nothing... I don't think that is nothing but luck. 
Then, let's have a look at your personal entry account. You have saved a total of 84 times. It seems you, are, you like you are quite secure. You use the personal data storage system almost every chance you get. The data records all the kinds of situations that you have encountered. There is you uh, panting rapidly and covered in sweat after being chased. There's also a desperation of you when surrounded by latex beats and puddles. And this is a relaxation of relief when you find a safe place. You record a lot of data in front of these clock in machines. But on by far most of this data, nothing but your calm face. Is that the only expression you have? Yes. <laughs> but now, let's add a new piece of data. Uh, hello and welcome, Mr. To the Intelligence Greenhouse Control Bureau. Please kindly state your wish. Someone else read this. I'm really reading too much. <laughs> the truck with the animals has arrived. We put these in a small room in the greenhouse. The genes of these living animal samples will help us find a breakthrough for the virus. I don't quite understand why we still need the genes of aquatic animals, because no one wants to become a fish that can only live in the water. The fluid bodies of some... Rubber animals perfectly conform to the characteristics of non-Newtonian fluid. They can diffuse and rebound physical shock to a great extent. At present, only electric shock can stun latex beasts to some degree. We also use this to subdue the failed products and seal them into jars. By artificially adding some man-made gas to the air vent of the greenhouse, the employees in the building can be constantly kept in the stick in a state of high spirits and concentration. At the same time, it can also increase their heart rate and raise their pulse effectively, reducing the risk, although this is not a long-term plan. Okay, okay, so operate. That's not how it army works. Um, what you mean? You require a greenhouse administrator for permission to utilize this function. Okay. Please contact the prototype to obtain greenhouse administrator permission. Oh, there's a little quick something interesting there. Do you really want to ask that unreliable robot for help? I'm quite curious in what way it will help you. Besides, Control Terminal, do you actually have to follow the subject's instructions? The meaning of my existence is precisely to provide more universal service. My service will not change depending on who it is. Okay, look for that robot, subject. Let me see what you can do. Wait a second, I can say... I see um, things in there. <laughs> yes, I know what you see. I don't mind adding another piece of your personal data. Hmm, gee, I wonder what Suki sees that is so fascinating to her. latex beast smoked the appearance of a plant and imitated the way the plant would hurt a, a, a hunt. They're certainly quite getting smarter. Well, it's great to let gas, because not glass, gas, because you're flowing into this room from the ventilators. That's a soothing gas I carefully prepared for you. The gas will last, relax your mind. Incidentally, with the property of also being capable of changing your body, don't you dare let my good will go to waste. But these gases are not very stable. Who knows what they, you will look like after smelling it? Only after experience it can you know. Going forward could be really dangerous, but if you turn off the fans, the gas will disappear away. A person should build a slot. Burning case. Those would be 
spot shortly. I don't think I actually tried saying anything else to it. You know what? I wonder if this will change anything. No, that's just for that one room only. <laughs> Internal contact. I turned the music off. <laughs> Hilarious. In the process of transferring you, mister. But I did. Successfully connected Dr. K to you, mister. You actually decided to start learning how to make harassment calls? This certainly isn't good behavior. Even if you call me repeatedly, there will be no improvement in your situation. I wish I could, through this terminal, directly turn you into a beast right now with radio waves. Unfortunately, there is no such technology. I'm going to continue enjoying my tin can dinner. Don't contact me again. Do it. Dr. K hung up. Do it. <laughs> Did you know, I can directly adjust the effectiveness of the ventilation fans with, until they, until overload and make the entire room fill up with transfer gas in an instant, or directly lock the whole room, draw some more latex beasts to you surrounding you, no matter which way, either effortlessly deal with you, Hazard, but I don't. I want to let you fail and then admit your own failure, instead of giving you no room for decision at all, only to, able to hopelessly await the end. I really hate to leave people with no choice. At the same time, I also believe that the person who wins in the end will definitely be me. And so, before you completely annoy me and make me decide to lock the doors, don't call me again. I don't feel like you're serious about that. I would say first, just in case. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are you taking revenge on me? Prevent for interrupting you over and over with again with transmissions. Prevent for me setting you up with all kinds of difficult obstacles for you. Yes. You finally know my real name. And finally get a chance to harass me in turn. Okay. This will only inspire me to use more extraordinary ways to turn you into an obedient, well-behaved, sticky little animal. <laughs> Let's wait and see. Keep going. Did he Okay, he didn't lock the doors. I can actually probably keep going here. Yeah. I'd say though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. K has hung up. Is that it? Did you just keep hanging up again? I don't know, let's find out. Yeah. I think it just keeps hanging up. Let's see what that cool device on the left there does. <laughs> Operate equipment. Uh, I already tried that. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... No. Hmm. You've probably already forgotten who you are. Uh, you just remember that you have become much cuter than before. With this new appearance and new body, are you pleased? Yeah, I mean that that thing right there. I already looked at it. It just says a human shaped thing. Persons are pale I think there's something you can do with it. Not Once yet. <laughs> Not yet, at least. Wait. So that gas. I'm assuming that gas, you breathe it in and it makes you change? Yes. And also. Why does it call just hold his nose? Look at yourself. Your path has already been decided. There is no turning back here. I'm guessing I only... It only proceeds... Yeah, at, when I get to these metal parts. So, as soon as I get through there, yeah. I'm still in control, though, which is amazing. Pretty insane. Let's find out. You people just have become long and thin like animals. The machine doesn't recognize them. Look at your stripes and curvy body. Did you really not realize that you aren't who you were a few minutes ago anymore? You made the impression of reoccurring assistance, mister. Yeah, this is... Yep, 
All right, then I'm gonna look at the mirror, and that's gonna be that. Okay, then Peru's gonna talk. Okay. It, did a bird just land on the windowsill? Even into glass, it flies with an iron will in order to achieve its goal. A display of great courage, but also great stupidity. What is the difference between what you will and it are doing? Oh, I'm not a fucking dumbass like it. <laughs> I can see, see glass. Alright, you can see deck The prototype is watering the flower. Prototype is watering the flower. You know what I mean? What, what, what just happened? Uh, the plant? The plant. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Are they gonna do anything with the prototype there? No. Wait. Just surprise the prototype. Oh well. It seems to understand what you want. Okay. Literally how though. Well, whatever. Because you look at it. As usual, not talkative. Subject, are you sure it understands what you mean? You didn't even say a single word just now. It, it, I've scanned okay. my brain waves. I probably understand. Your silence always contains a lot of information. You don't need any words to let us know what you want to say. The way to make friends with you is so they want to make friends with you so badly. If only you could open the window and let them come in. I let them help you grow wings. They could fly away from here. For fuck's sake, I thought it was far enough away. Wait, does that mean the latex beasts are outside as well? Yes. Uh oh. Is it the Benoit? Benoit? Please. Oh, it's a oh. I, well, a lot of things, actually. Okay. I wanna turn into a banoia. This place is far more lively than I thought. You should be thankful that these little animals are not interested in you. All the animal genes in this institute were entirely collected on site from real animals. Those animals were caged somewhere in the greenhouse. Now they all should have ran away or been turned into latex beasts, right? The part of the animals that become latex beasts, like those just now, still lives carefully carefree in the greenhouse. Okay, so I don't think we can actually turn into those animals, because I think... Those are real animals. It, well, the real animals are already transformed by latex bees, but that means the latex already has a host. Oh, so they're not interested in you. Exactly. <sighs> sure, why not? Sure. But I, I think you could make a cat if we wanted to, but I don't want to spend more time on it. <laughs> Are you sure, mister, that you want to share the greenhouse administrator permissions? <laughs> this operation may cause major safety hazards. According to Article 42 of the Greenhouse Management Regulations, the greenhouse, uh, I can't re read that fast enough. That's going on its own. Um, whatever. It's fine. I'll just... Okay. Oh. <sighs>
Please kindly do not make such an expression. I know you're serious, mister, but I absolutely must dissuade you from any, any as any necessary for, for possible desire, undes undesirable consequences. What? Please kindly do not threaten your colleagues. It will cause me great <laughs> unnecessary stress. I'm willing to provide service to everyone. However, sharing GA permissions with a subject who is not on the side list of the Institute, the risks brought about such behavior require me to exercise caution. Very well, mister. Since your attitude is, is, such, uh, is of such determination, the process of sharing GA permissions with the subject is on your behalf, mister. Oh my. Jay permissions have been successfully shared. Thank you kindly for using. Goodbye. General administrator? So we can just do a bunch of cool shit now? I guess so. Oh. Oh, that's the char it's the charging station for the robot. Yes. Why when I give it instructions? It's not so smart anymore. Either way, nice job. The evil strange doctor scheme has failed once again. The brave subject will continue his journey. Into the unknown. Yeah, that just turns the music off. Do it. Okay. Personally, seeing the obstacles I place be myself being removed is a, a really scarring feeling. I worked for a heart for a long time to prepare all this, all, all this gas. I thought it would at least delay you for a while, but I also knew you would be so stupid to recklessly breathe in the gas in this, in this timeline. My goals are already been achieved. <laughs> In the meantime, while you were stuck in here, a profile opponent I have already reached the room right ahead. It is waiting for you. Are you prepared to take on a real challenge? Excellent or stupid, we will have the answer right away. What's on me? On me, Nick. Cat cam. I just like an overhead cam up there. Whoops. Cat cam. I didn't mean to call him again. Overhead camera, cat cam. No. Yes. No. Not right now. I just mean like. No. <laughs> it'd be cute. No. It'd get. It'd get more people in your streams, maybe. Good people in the Palace Station. You realize my cat doesn't actually like. Uh, isn't always here. Yeah. So. Oh my god. Oh my god. Excessive padding. She apparently likes it too. She does actually. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Feels adorable. That face of yours. After seeing it for a long time, it feels pretty pleasant to see. If turned to a latex beast, this face would definitely look more handsome. It was pretty handsome. It was a cat. Yeah. Sna uh, I'm not sure it's blowing for the vent, making you feel refreshed. Tiger or something. What are you making? The purple pipe is busy. Is it squeezing oranges into juice and using the same juices to generate electricity? If the power isn't restored, in... did I read that wrong? If I the power isn't restored soon, when backup power runs out, this juice will be the only source of electricity in the greenhouse. Electricity to robots is life. That makes sense. Aww. It said that it is just worried that the power outage could make the smart tele temperature control fail, affecting the flora and fauna in the greenhouse, and is working hard to prepare it. I didn't expect it to be so surprisingly responsible. But why is it just let the plants overgrow here? The roots of the greenhouse plants even extend to the next room and downstairs. According to the record, Doctor, you borrowed the garden shears a few years ago and have not yet returned them, which resulted in the prototype having no tools for cutting. Ooh, shade. Doctor K, are you still there, Doctor? Nope. <laughs> he, he hung up. Sturdy machine. The electric arcs constantly emerging in the glass cover on top. Machine. Don't know what it does. What do you expect? I don't have something to say every single moment. Turn back. Go on. Let me see how funny your little po your posh will be. As the powerful opponent I set up, forced you down, forcibly assimilating. And as far as should end. Hazard should be eliminated. Trouble should be resolved. Being turned into a beast is your only way out. I don't want to repeat the sentence anymore. Go ahead, repeat the sentence some more. Seeing the, like, seeing the oranges turn into juice fills it with generation. Sure. Why generation? I don't get it. Generator room. Gener what? Generator room? Yeah, and I was... And I was are you still there? Are you still there, Dr. K? Just because. I am deeply sorry to disturb you, but doctor, I have a lot of questions that I want to a wish to ask you. May I please hold you up for a little bit? What is it? 
I am most puzzled by your behavior, Doctor. Why did you become this way? Why do you verbally abuse that subject and push him around every step of the way, Doctor? My impression of you is that you are an excellent researcher of great composure, calmness, and meticulous behavior. Why can How can you make so many blunders, Doctor? I am convinced that you are not such an unkind, malevolent person, Doctor. I think that there must be some reason that forces you to pretend to be this way. Besides, why do you not simply tell him what happened to, in the outside world, Doctor? You have been concealing everything. Does it mean that to... Does it mean that the subject... I didn't indeed intentionally pretend to be like that. He currently knows nothing whatsoever about anything, because I didn't explain anything, anything to him at all. Maybe he has already read some information on the way, and maybe he guessed some things based on that information. My task is precisely to make sure that plan can be carried out smoothly and successfully. But his arrival is like a whole torn canvas. If not quickly repaired, it may spread out more and more. The worst case outcome would be the complete failure of the entire plan. I create a lot of hardships and dangers for that journey of his. I also ceaselessly, ceaselessly ridiculed him on the way. All of this just to prevent him from leaving this place. I guess he must really hate my guts now. But my plan is just plain. But my plan is just plan. Sorry. Eliminating hazards is just my job. Therefore, you have always opposed him, Doctor. Made him feel embarrassed everywhere. Hindered his escape attempts. Because his arrival could eventually ruin that whole plan, right? Doctor, can you be certain that he is... For now, no. As I said, at present, he is still merely a hazard. But regardless of whether he turns out to be or not, I absolutely have to keep him firmly locked in this building. That great plan has no room for error. In that case, Doctor, if he poses such a great threat, why do you still want to show him mercy time and again? You don't mercilessly kill him, did you? You didn't mercilessly kill him, did you? You decided to save him while he was still sleeping in that life support chamber. And you were also supplying with life-sustaining fluid, Doctor. After he woke up, you started doing everything you can to slow down his pace, Doctor. Wanting to turn him into a beast, but always leaving some way for him to escape. With your permissions, you have many more direct and efficient ways to get rid of that subject. But you just want him watch him go on and on, step after step, Doctor. Is that on purpose, too? And why do you keep verbally attacking that attacking that subject? Does that make sense, Doctor? While he was still sleeping, you could have explained... Already expected this to happen, right, Doctor? If the plan is so important, why do you take such a risk? Because I want him to live. A villain of few words. Or a vicious, aggressive adversary. Which one can motivate him more to go forward? If I hadn't shown up. Who knows if, under the immense loneliness and pressure of survival, he wouldn't give up in the hope to move forward, and choose to hide in some corner, silently waiting for rescue. I hope that me appearing can at least give it, keep him from giving up, although it is by force. Only if he keeps moving on can he survive. No, no wonder you always force him to be on the move. And I finally understand why you take such extreme measures. All of this to prevent him... Compared to that end... Being assimilated by a latex beast is really the best outcome he can get. I see now. You are avoiding the worst possibility for him. And you are pushing him forward in your own way to avoid that outcome, Doctor. You are as un unwavering as ever, Doctor. Your plan is truly perfect. I misunderstood you, Doctor. You have already cleared all my doubts. As for why he still hasn't been turned into a beast, part of it is because he is really very smart. If it wasn't for my obstructions, here it really is possible he could have escaped in this place with the Black Wolf. Another part is that I still want to continue observing. Observe how he will continue to go on, just desperately surviving. Maybe I've already been moved by the, his persist, perseverant spirit. Just like him, I also once hoped that through my own efforts, I could change this tragic situation around me. But ultimately, I only changed myself. Nothing else in this world could I change. <coughs> What reason do I have to embrace such hard-working person? The last part of it is because I am so lonely. Doctor, what is your objective in that plan? If that subject really manages to overcome all these ob all these obstacles and reaches the exit, what then, Doctor? I will continue maintaining this approach moving forward. But if he really starts getting close to the exit at the bottom, I guarantee that I would take this matter seriously. I strive to the greatest extent to solve the problem without causing casualties. 
But I will put on the objective as top priority to the very end. I literally just want to try and save him. That subject and the group of people outside who need to be saved more. You need to be saved, Doctor. One last thing. Back in the library, I really wanted to hit him. Nobody's perfect, Doctor. You have already done well. This machine is having an interesting conversation with him. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you. That was also a very long conversation. We're already past time. It was insightful, though. Yeah. Should we should we end the episode here and just... Yes. Okay. See you guys next time.